We've been here since first thing this morning. Actually, the charity day started actually in Asia before I came into work. It's kicking off now uh, in, in, in the United States. Uh, and for 24 hours, the brokers of ICAC uh, will give their trading commissions to charities worldwide that we've selected, about 100 charities. This thing's been going on for 25 years. Actually, today's our 25th anniversary. Uh, so we're looking at something like 2,700 people, 25 countries, uh, you know, six continents. And lots of it's celebrities. A, and, and celebrities come by and, uh, you know, we have them trade. We were very lucky uh, earlier to have the Duchess of Cornwall come in and she bought some platinum and she bought some coal uh, and she did a very good job. Uh, and we've got a very famous uh, footballer back there. Uh, I think his name's Rio Ferdinand. So he played soccer, I believe, for Man United. So he's attracting a lot of interest and I'm sure he'll do a trade. And there have been actresses and, you know, lots of people I don't recognise. <laughs> OK, and how about Brexit? I mean, the last 24 hours haven't necessarily been great when it's come to Brexit negotiations. How would you say they're going and how's it going down in the city? Look, the city has quite rightly been asking for as much certainty as possible for a while now. Um, it's a tough ask because there are a lot of moving pieces and, uh, you know, have some sympathy for, you know, both sides of the table. They, they both have interests that they're going to try and defend. Uh, the latest situation in Northern Ireland is, is interesting uh, and I'm certainly not an expert in, in Northern Ireland politics uh, but maybe if the North was to stay uh, involved in uh, exposure to the European Union it could be a very attractive place, it could become the, the Monaco of Great Britain uh, and attract business but I'm sure there are other political uh, motives to the stance that uh, everybody's taking and obviously the other question that arises is well, if you're going to have that situation for Northern Ireland, what about Scotland or what about the city of London? So it is a very difficult one. Uh, but what we would like is to, uh, you know, find out where this is going to land. And in the meantime, most uh, big firms like ours are assuming the worst. We have to assume the worst. So and the worst plans. is, you know, a hard Brexit. Now, having said that, um, we already have extensive offices across continental Europe. So we. You know, we're in Paris, we're in Frankfurt, we're in Madrid. Uh, you know, we have brokers on the ground. Uh, so for us, we're, we're somewhat hedged in that regard. Uh, but nevertheless, I think everybody in UK business wants certainty and some clarity. And at the moment, in the very short term, most of the banks that we talk to are planning on leaving their traders in London. How sustainable that is for the long term is unknown. Uh, and as I say, whilst we already have brokers talking to traders in Paris and talking to traders in Frankfurt, if it comes to pass in the future that a large number of London-based traders have to, by virtue of new legislation, move to the continent, um, then we would in all likelihood have to move infrastructure to follow them. But in the short term, uh, I think that's less likely.